Good evening from New York. Yesterday's attack on Judge Sonia Sotomayor as a reverse racist having blown up in their faces when it was discovered that much of what she had to say on the subject of heritage influencing rulings matched almost word for word what conservative nominee Samuel Alito said at his Supreme Court confirmation hearings three years ago. Now, in our fifth story in the countdown, the Republicans have changed tack. Now Sotomayor is stupid, is a Democratic version of Harriet Myers, and believes state judges wind up making both law and policy. The law and policy stuff turns out to duplicate what Justice Antonin Scalia said. And as to her intelligence, the nation is now being lectured by fools like Karl Rove, who nominated Harriet Myers and who had previously solicited and swallowed fairy tales about WMD and 9-11 culpability in Iraq. Already having called her stupid, Mr. Rove now using gender-loaded terms like emotion to describe the judge's decisions and the judge herself, who would be only the third woman to serve on the Supreme Court. At the same time, Mr. Rove trying to claim that Judge Sotomayor would not be the court's first Hispanic justice, instead incorrectly saying that Benjamin Cardozo had that distinction, even though his ancestors were from Portugal. Others continuing to get their backsides handed to them as well by criticizing Judge Sotomayor for having said, as she did at a Duke Law School forum in 2005, the very same thing that the conservative justice on the Supreme Court already had. Court of Appeals is where policy is made. And I know, and I know this is on tape, and I should never say that because we don't make law, I know. Um, uh, okay, I know. I know. I'm not, I'm not promoting it, and I'm not advocating it, I'm, you know. Um, okay. Um, having said that, um, the Court of Appeals is where, before the Supreme Court makes the final decision, the law is percolating. Its interpretation, its application. Our founding fathers were fortune tellers, they were prophets. They were wise beyond measure. I'm very much like these people, my friends, and my ability to prognosticate and profit the future. Thomas Jefferson warned 188 years ago that the federal government and the germ of its dissolution was in the way the federal judiciary was constituted. Ergo, 188 years later, he's right. We have Sonia Sotomayor, who thinks that the court is where policy is made. Of course, 181 years later, in the majority opinion of the 2002 case, Republican Party of Minnesota v. White, Justice Scalia writing, quote, The judges of inferior, that is, lower courts, often make law, since the precedent of the highest court does not cover every situation and not every case is reviewed. The fallacy that only Judge Sotomayor makes law or wants to, the focus of today's racist gem, courtesy John Derbyshire at the National Review Online, quote, At SCOTUS, she'll make policy what need legislation. More jobs, more opportunity for twofer second raters. A twofer being, in the vernacular, someone of two minority backgrounds that an employer can count as part of two different quotas. Forget all talk earlier this week from Senate Republicans having claimed they would need ample time to adequately scrutinize the judge's record. Pat Roberts of Kansas today becoming the first Republican to declare on right-wing radio that he will be voting against her and he don't care who might consider him a racist because of it. Semper Fi... Well, I'm a Marine, and uh, nothing much scares me. And so basically, um, that's not going to be a consideration in my vote. I voted no in 1998. Uh, I did not feel that she was appropriate on the appeals court. Uh, since that time, she has made statements on the role of the appeals court that I think is improper. Time now to call in our own Howard Feynman, senior Washington correspondent for Newsweek magazine. Howard, good evening. Hi, Keith. Using this word, emotion, to describe the perceived shortcomings of a female judge, is that akin to uh, perhaps describing whether an African or asking whether an African-American judge was articulate? Is this a more code? Well, it's code for desperation on the part of conservatives and indeed Republicans who are looking for some way to get traction as they, they try to oppose Judge Sotomayor. Uh, First of all, the White House was, was brilliant to roll this out during the recess. The Republicans aren't here. They can't sort of gather in their war councils. And while they're gone, uh, people like Rush Limbaugh are in charge. And as, as uh, vehement as Rush is, it just doesn't seem to be getting traction. And I know over at the White House, they're pretty confident. They're being very careful and methodical about answering every factual or emotional, talk about the side that's using emotion here, mm -hmm. uh, emotional charge. And I think they're doing a pretty good job of it. And when you talk to Republicans, they say, 
we, we, it hasn't come together for us yet at all, and that's why they're, 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 they're grasping. And to that point, in the midst of these uh, latest attacks today came reports from other sources that, that no Republican actually believes the party is going to defeat or even seriously impede this confirmation. So what is actually being done here? What, who is gaining from this, and, and how do they think they're gaining from it? Well, as we, we said on Tuesday night, uh, I, nobody I talked to then or now thinks, uh, absent some huge revelation, that it's likely that this thing can be derailed. And she's gotten a lot of positive uh, reviews. What the Republicans and conservatives are doing are talking to themselves and to their base. There are certain issues that she's expressed opinions on that they think they can excite their own base about, whether it's Second Amendment things related to gun control, whether it's this notion of activist judges, whether it's a question of affirmative action in that New Haven case involving the firefighters. Those issues are not yet and maybe never will resonate with the country as a whole. But to the core base of the Republican Party, and it's a shrinking one, those interest groups have an interest in fundraising out of them, expanding their base with them, getting them angry, upset, and paranoid. That's how one branch of American politics works, and, and, and the conservatives and Republicans are going to work that, even if it has nothing ultimately to do with whether they can stop uh, Sotomayor, which I don't think they can do. But let's let's assume for a second that there has there is some value to that, even just to firm up the base, which is easier to do the smaller it gets. But I mean, if <laughs> right. is does it, it's not being done well. It's two days in a row that they've trotted out these you know, Titanic or, or or pumped up uh, two Titanic proportions events that have turned out to be in both cases. Uh, duplicate statements, essentially, that were made first by Alito, and in today's case, made by the most conservative man on the bench in years, Antonin Scalia. D d nobody is, is Google not available to the GOP? Uh, well, they don't have an organized effort to do it. Uh, Rush is it. I mean, I, I've written that there's a, there's a shadow RNC. It's, it's, it's Rush, Nude, and Cheney. Uh, and, uh, and there's no organized, I stress, no organized opposition yet, and I'm not sure there's going to be much in opposition to Judge Sotomayor. Uh, the White House is superbly organized. Their allies are superbly organized. They've got people inside the White House who have been through this for years. They rolled it out with great care and precision. And I don't see any kind of organization, any organization yet developed on the other side. It's not like mm -hmm. it was in the days when Bush was president and the, uh, uh, and the Democrats and their liberal allies really worked it hard even though they lost. You don't see any of that down here, Keith, and I'm not sure we're going to. George Bush had the Google. Uh, Howard Feynman of MSNBC <laughs> and Newsweek, as always. Thank you, Howard.